very warm namaste viewers and welcome to yet another super exclusive episode of beyond show featuring the story of indian gm master with professor deepak pinton but before diving into this uh, epic conversation i just want to thank you all for all your support and love that you are giving to this channel and the uh, content that we are creating and stay tuned for more such inspirational and uh, epic short stories uh, thank you again thank you so much so put your pipettes down for a while and listen to the today's epic short story the super exclusive episode featuring professor deepak pentel uncovering uh, the story of indian gm master let's go professor deepak pentel is a distinguished geneticist and a well renowned academician who has made remarkable contribution to the field of plant biotechnology and crop improvement He is currently working as SCRB National Science Chair in the Department of Genetics, University of Delhi South Campus. Professor Pentel completed his B.Sc. and M.Sc. from the Department of Botany, Punjab University, Chandigarh, and also he did his Ph.D. from Rutgers University, United States, and postdoc from the University of Nottingham. He returned to India to join the Tata Energy Research Institute in 1985. and further in 1993 he joined the university of delhi south campus as professor of genetics professor pentel had been the director of university of delhi south campus from the year 2000 to 2005 and in the year 2005 he he became the vice chancellor of the university of delhi at the academic front he strongly believed that research should lead to useful products and in this regard he uh, his group published over 90 uh, reputed publications in national and international journals his effort led to the establishment of the center for genetic manipulation of crop plants cgmcp uh, which is uh, dedicated uh, to the development and improvement of mustard from the work done uh, in the department and also in this uh, center DMH1 mustard hybrid with improved yield reached the farmer fields under his untiring leadership another mustard hy- hybrid that is DMH11 developed based on the transgenic approach uh, is recently he became by the DEAC vice chancellor of and is the, the university first, uh, of delhi crop from any university in the country uh, which got uh, the approval for the commercial release by the government He has been the active uh, member of uh, many prestigious national uh, scientific academies. Also he has received several awards and recognition for his contribution in plant genetics and crop improvement including uh, the lifetime achievement award in agriculture by Mahindra and Mahindra OP Basin award for agriculture Bayrak Innovator Award for the development of DMH11 and its parental events and many more uh, such awards are uh, there in his name and i am very delighted to have uh, him on the show so namaste sir namaste ji namaste. welcome to be on show and thank you so much for accepting Good our invitation to see you back on at south campus okay thank you so much sir so uh, sir thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity to ask and showcase your journey decades of research journey to my audience so first of all uh, kindly let us know the research interest and vision uh, throughout your uh, journey what all research interest and what all vision you have all through your these years sonia i i did my schooling in punjab where my father was a medical doctor and none of no but no one in our family owns any land we are not agriculture people but my father served in rural side of punjab as a doctor and i think i mean i did my 8th grade from a small school in a village called bada pen near kuraya mm-hmm. uh, on the delhi amritsar highway okay. and uh, i think that interested me in agriculture because mm-hmm. i had to 
I was I studied on the rural side of Punjab, and uh, but nothing. I didn't want to go into medicine because I I cannot stand the human suffering. So the best thing for me was to pick something to do in biology, and Punjab University Botany Department looked pretty attractive. Mm. Chandigarh is a nice city. Yes. Okay. So uh, my father was working at. A place called Dera Basi on the mm -hmm. Amala Chandigarh road, mm -hmm. and I used to go on a scooter every day to okay. study at uh, mm -hmm. DAV College first, and then at Punjab University mm -hmm. Chandigarh. And uh, we, we had an honors school where three years bachelor's degree was in the university department, and then master's degree was by giving a doing a research project and submitting a thesis. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty good education. Well, we had some good teachers, but I never thought that I'll. You know, I was more interested in evolutionary biology. Mm -hmm. So when things didn't look very good at botany department, because it 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 was a it was a very good department, but then there were calls for head shape and all that. So things sort of came down, and I felt I must find a good lab to do my doctoral work. Mm -hmm. So I applied at a couple of universities in the United States, mm -hmm. and two or three of them accepted me. One, my TOEFL score didn't reach on time, so they said you come after six months. So I said, why wait for six months? Mm -hmm. So I went to Rutgers, uh, and I worked on wheat tissue culture there. Uh, so at that time, sir, wheat tissue culture is again a very it was just starting. Yes. There was no protocol, mm -hmm. and uh, interestingly. I got regeneration from immature embryos, and I didn't even bother to publish it. Mm. My guide was not very active sort of fellow, and uh, I also didn't realize the importance of the work that I had yeah. done. So I had nothing to show from my PhD oh. uh, thesis, although mm. we had made the important breakthrough of regenerating mm. the ability to regenerate from the scutellar tissue. Mm. So on hindsight, I feel. Quite bad that I didn't have the patience to, or my guide didn't push me. But done is done. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be in a better lab, and I got some postdocs in in a paper chemistry institute in Wisconsin. So I thought, what will I do here? Meanwhile, I got uh, an offer for from Professor Ted Cocking at University of Nottingham, mm -hmm. who was quite a well-known. Authority in mm. somatic cell genetics, mm. so I said goodbye U.S. <laughs> and uh, I went to Nottingham and first, I thought I will work for two years and uh, as a postdoc. But first two years I had no publications again. Mm. So there was a period of six seven years mm. initially where I had no publications. Mm. And then I, uh, Professor Cocking wanted to uh, get the hybrid protoplast hybrid protoplast fusion hybrids. Manually pick them up and so on, but I thought that's not going to mm -hmm. work because how do you locate them if you give fluorescence? So it looked very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, so I suggested to him that we work with mutants, so that uh, so we made a we had a chap from Ireland, John Hamill, very bright young PhD scholar, and uh, just in discussion. He mentioned to me that uh, you know why don't we have an oxotrophic mutant and a resistant mutant, and that will become a universal hybridizer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it came out of our discussion only. So we had nitrate reductase minus mutants. Mm -hmm. So that was the oxotrophic mutation, mm -hmm. which could be only cleared by the other parent mm -hmm. with which we are making hybrid, and the other parent had streptomycin resistance. Mm -hmm. So. We thought uh, not the other parent, the same parent, same tobacco plant had an oxotrophic mutation in the nucleus mm -hmm. and a chloroplast resistance in the in the in the plastid. Mm -hmm. That chloroplast plastid with resistance to streptomycin was made by Paul Maliga, mm -hmm. and nitrate reductase was uh, minus mutant in tobacco was made by uh, Andreas Muller mm -hmm. in Gatterstevan. So I went to Gatterstevan mm -hmm. at that time, uh, East Europe and. East Germany and mm. West Germany were separate entities, and it was a very interesting experience. I had never realized that 
a communist country could be so tightly you know mm. controlled yes. it was a different world going mm. in in berlin from crossing over to east germany anyway and this muller was very kind he said now i have a plan what do you want to do with cell cultures so that double mutant we fused with nicotiana rustica mm. and made hybrids we fused it with petunia mm. and later on analysis showed that the petunia chromosomes uh, were retained the entobacum chromos uh, uh, chromosomes got eliminated mm. so we got a petunia with step resistant chloroplast from nicotiana mm. so that became the basis of your no i in fact sonia i realized that somatic cell hybridization is not going to give us much mm. because it, it is good for cleaning up because mitochondria recombine so if you want to clean up a cms system mm -hmm. cms system you want to have a mitochondria of the alien parent mm -hmm. and chloroplast of your yeah. crop that you can do through somatic cell hybridization mm -hmm. but chromosomal level recombinations etc remember this was not markers were not available mm -hmm. at that time so wide hybridization was pretty difficult uh, game to play but let me clarify here i always wanted to come back and when i would come here to india uh, most of the people would say why do you want to come back hmm. uh, i mean nobody was really encouraging except my very favorite favorite teacher hmm. who taught us genetics dr s c verma he was head at hmm. uh, chandigarh uh, our botany department so he said you can come back we will look into your he was the only one who was in enthusiastic hmm. others were saying so meanwhile some developments happened uh, tata had an open this hmm. institute tata energy research institute Very. and uh, the the director at that time and he remained director for quite some time dr r k pachauri was very keen to take people in the field of biotechnology hmm. so that was the idea that how do we bring the biotechnology hmm. to so i was tata's have floated very good institutions as you know yes. uh, this tifr mm. indian institute of science so i did not hesitate for a moment to join mm. terry and it was a very interesting experience we converted a house into laboratories and we made we we did transgenic development in all the brassica species mm. rapa nigra oleracea we put markers into those mm -hmm. uh, resistance markers so that you can hybridize any with any uh, oleracea with mm -hmm. rapa and and we had good interaction with uh, people at iri dr sham prakash he had made some wide hybrids hybrids dr shivanna made lot of wide hybrids so why you selected a uh, brassica ah that that's uh, <laughs> that, that I, i forgot to mention that see when i returned rockefeller foundation gave me uh, one of their quite prestigious award mm -hmm. in which i could work with any western lab okay. uh, so that i don't get completely isolated in india mm -hmm. and their interest was in rice actually okay. so i opted to go to max planck in cologne where mm -hmm. jeff shell uh, was working you know pioneer in mm -hmm. the agrobacterium research so Rockefeller Foundation also wanted me to work on rice, but at that time, uh, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi was the Prime Minister, and we were having shortage of edible oils, and the technology mission was mm -hmm. a couple of technology missions were started under Sam Petroda. Mm -hmm. uh, telecom was one, and you know that was a great success story. Mm -hmm. uh, drinking water, we are still mm -hmm. battling with yes. it. The harder frontier. so i felt why not work on an indian crop where you won't be competing with anybody mm. and also who will work with these crops somebody in india should take them yes. up so that is how i decided to so when i went to cologne jeff shell said what for these are the people who are working on rice so you go and join them i told him i am not interested in rice we have decided to work on mustard mm. uh, now there was a bad side of it that who will quote your paper mm. because 
mustard is hardly grown anywhere hmm. some 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 but for mustard wo uh, sauce ha uh, and mustard. on the frankfurters hmm. uh, very limited area around the world and the must dust ke jinsi so that was the bad part but sir that system is good for our country it is necessary to no that, that's what i uh, yes. that's what i wanted to say hmm. that it was it is it is really a pleasure and privilege to work on a crop which is grown only in india hmm. and is of such vital importance to our agriculture hmm. so but fortunately chinese started working there are a lot of vegetable okay. types okay and they actually beat us to hmm. sequencing of brassica juice so they did a vegetable type hmm. sequencing we got gave them some information also so i'm also an author on that paper but now there are plenty of citations on mustard mm. also and there were some evolutionary aspects taken up mm. but uh, the decision on brassicas was uh, let's not compete because we may not be in a situation to compete mm. uh, and the positive side was let's work on a crop which would improve the mm. uh, edible oil situation in the country so for a couple of years uh, the situation remained okay but as you know recently we have been importing almost 70 to 80000 crore worth of edible oils and in after pandemic year last financial year mm. 21 22 156000 crore mm. worth of edible oils were imported the so situation is still not uh, very good so well, the prices might have come mm. little bit down but you know uh, we have we like to use lot of oil in our mm. cooking so anybody who has and something would like to eat <laughs> something or the other which is mm. fried so uh, the 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 consumption has gone high it mm. came low in the covid year mm. and then it took little time to pick up maybe the oil prices went very high mm. so people but this financial year it seems quite a substantial mm. more amount of edible oil has been consumed mm. so we may be ending up paying huge amount of money again mm. i i don't have the figures for this year yet but we need to improve our productivity for sure so sir when uh, did you get uh, the turning point or the lead breakthrough lead that at that point you thought that yes we can take up this variety ahead and also for the commercial commercialization you know what what we thought was that we will work on heterosis breeding mm. and because junsia may be uh, is with icar uh, let's try to see if we can have rape seed adapted to indian conditions mm-hmm. uh, rape seed was grown in punjab at that time as called and it was called as gobi sarso uh, so we, we looked at that and there were two three cms systems which we call as alloplasmic system mm-hmm. like Dr. Shivana's lab, Champakash, mm. they crossed the wild relatives, Morikandia, mm. Tony Fortai, with Brassica juncia, and backcrossed it. So you had Brassica juncia with Tony Fortai mm. cytoplasm, mm. with Morikandia cytoplasm, and as mm. you know, we call them as alloplasmic mm. lines. The cytoplasm has come from an allo mm. source. Yes, These had severe problems of yellowing hmm. because the tony fortai chloroplast didn't seem to be compatible hmm. with the juncia nuclear genome hmm. and also there were abnormalities hmm. in the flowers <laughs> so we thought this is good thing we will make somatic hybrids hmm. and we will clean up these one or two alloplasmic systems uh, and we could manage that like in the oxirina hmm. alloplasmic cms system we got chloroplast of juncia to come in the hmm. somatic hybrid uh, but the problem was that the storers were not available and hmm. labs are still struggling because the storer function may be also in the alien plant hmm. now cytoplasm when you back cross you can put it into alloplasmic line you can make hmm. more readily but to get a specific gene hmm. to get introgressed into brassica juncia genome hmm. uh, it sounded very so at that time when these cms systems were not working 
we also made a very important observation. Dr. Pradhan joined me. He was selected for ARS Agriculture Research Service, yes, sir. posted at Shimla, but he wanted to work on molecular aspects and so on. He was not getting much to do there. Not many people will leave a permanent position in the government mm. and come to a contractual uh, mm. position, but he did. And he brought with him the field dialing crosses ex mm. experience and all that. And I went to a rapeseed conference in Poland in, in that 1990s time. And I, Jan Chaminsky, a Polish professor who had worked on rapeseed, he said, uh, Deepak, do you know that mustard is grown in Soviet Union also in, in the area which is now Ukraine and mm, all that? Okay. I said, I, I didn't know that. Mm. And he said, take some seed. Mm. So when we got that seed and grew it in our fields, we found that it is long day, required, day mm. length, particular day length is required for mm. it to come to flowering. But it looked like a very different material from our mustard. Mm. So, heterosis breeding, you need... So, that, that was a better cultivar? No, it was not better. We thought it would be a good combiner. Okay. And let's test it for mm. whether hybrids between East European mm. mustard and Indian mustard will out yield mm. the, the varieties Preparing. that we had at that time. Mm. So, Dr. Pradhan showed, we published it in Euphitica. It's a core breeding journal. Mm. Uh, this was around 1996. So that time you were still uh, at Terry. Okay. And we found that there is about 20% increase in yield over the best parent that we used, that's Varuna. Mm -hmm. And that was one component, that you had material which was uh, genetically distinct mm -hmm. lines within mustard, which when crossed uh, will give you heterosis to the extent of about 20 to 25%. Mm -hmm. This was one thing which took us more strongly into heterosis breeding. The other thing was, as I said, you need a pollination control mechanism. Yes. It's a self-pollinating crop. Mm. So it sets seeds if you leave it alone. Mm. So you have to make one line male sterile. And mm. that's why we got interested in the alloplasmic system okay. uh, to, to clean them up. Mm. But these were not working well. Okay. So then I decided in a, just like that, that why don't we try this barnes Bastar system? Now you know the barnes Bastar system was originally published in 1990-92 time by PGS in Belgium. And I, I, I admired that work very much because it was mm -hmm. such a neat piece of work. Mm -hmm. You express a ribonuclease in the tapetum tissue of the anther mm -hmm. which surrounds the developing microspores. microspores yes. and the tapetum tissue gets aborted, so the microspore, which, which mm. receive nourishment from the tapetum, then start also dying, mm. and you get perfect male sterility. So I didn't think about patenting and all that. I thought let's try it, mm. and at that time, uh, you know, the I realized that Terry has is not particularly happy with this long-term okay. breeding program. Mm. Uh, Dr. Anil Grover, who also left his ARS and joined okay. us at Terry. Mm. Uh, so Dr. Grover also joined there? Yeah, he was in Terry. Okay. And Dr. A.K. Singh, who is now mm. the director, uh, he I was know. also in Terry. Okay, that I remember. So we had, we had some very mm. good people. Dr. Malti Lakshmi Kwaran, who mm. then left and became a, more or less a patent uh, mm. consultant. So, we started with the Barnes Bastard system and we had a huge amount of difficulties in cloning the Barnes gene because mm. that will kill the bacteria in which you are cloning it also. <laughs> so then we put the Bastard gene in the background. Mm. Uh, and I had to leave Terry under a bit of duress at that time because we were not getting access, we were not getting the kind of support with which we had started. Mm. So it's like things are going downhill. So I got call for interview for professor's job at in the department of genetics and that professor Bakshi was the vice chancellor at that time and we had some very good people on the board whom I had never mm -hmm. heard of or never met. Sandeep Basu was there, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Mitra who was a yeast geneticist from TIFR was there, Dr. Lakotia 
So he has mm -hmm. done some wonderful genetics work on Drosophila. So they selected me. I was very happy to join, but when I came here, I found that there is nothing happening here. Mm -hmm. I mean, such a great piece of real estate the cost of this land would mm. run into crores even at that time. Mm. I'm talking about 93, mm. 90. But nothing. Your, your plant molecular biology department also didn't want to mm. move here because electricity was not there. Mm. So we just ran around and trying to get things together. Mm. So, But then I thought my career is over. I, I went to see I went to see Dr. Bakshi, Professor Bakshi, and I mm. told him that I think I've got a nice job, but my research career is almost over mm. because there's a building standing there for the last mm. 15 years which has not been completed. Mm. That uh, Bachavat block, sir? Bachavat block. Okay. There were bamboo scaffolds on that <laughs> still. Mm. And we ended up paying more money to the contractors for not mm. for non completion of the work due to our fault rather than contractors' oh. fault. Something called 10 cc or something like that. So we went to, uh, and then plant molecular biology also decided to come here. Mm. So that was good support. Mm. I used to go with the faculty member there to buy cables. Mm. We got some better electricity connection. Mm. And I got some money from Michael. And that money we used to, of course, Professor Bakshi gave the money to complete this block. Mm. And uh, so that's the way we started in things. But the idea was to keep working on mustard. Hmm. Yes. So uh, how you have ut utilized the space for fields and uh, other uh, phytotons? Because for such screening, fields are must. See, when I joined at uh, South Campus, I applied for DBT grant. We got some. Hmm. This was about 80, 90 lakh. And you cannot really start a program like what we were doing in Terry mm. with an 80-90 lakh grant. So some inspiration came to me that why should why don't I write to the National Dairy Development Board? Mm. So in 1994, around June time, I wrote a letter to Dr. Kurian, who was the chairman, and mm. and. Uh, I wrote to him that we need to establish some modern biotechnology, particularly transgenic development mm. capacity, genetic engineer plant based capacity. Uh, to my surprise, he, in, he invited me to Anand mm. to present. And uh, I had taken all my slides showing mm. somatic hybrids and mm. molecular analysis and all that. And some of the junior people there, were director there and things like that. They came to see me in my room where I was staying in the guest house. And he said that, uh, tell us how many slides you have and what are you going to mm. show to Dr. Kurian. So I gave them all the explanation. They said, he's not going to have that much of patience. Mm. So you reduce your presentation and slides. So I, I told them, now you leave me alone. I have understood your point. <laughs> so I will only mm. show five, six slides mm. to the point and, and tell him what we would like to do. So when the meeting started, I had never met Dr. Kurian before. Mm. Uh, in fact, later on, I found out that he had uh, got in touch with Professor Padmanabhan at Indian Institute of Science and Professor Dr. Dev Kush at mm. Erie mm. to ask whether this project he should fund or not. So he had done some okay, background research. Oh, background research. Yeah. Dr. Kurian, I mean, I, I have not met many more interesting people. He was cutting jokes. He was saying that we are not doing enough in agriculture mm. research. We get most of our things from outside only, mm. pointing to draft meat and mm. <laughs> draft rice. So I thought, I, I found so humorous and so I was in splits, you know, I was laughing away and I realized that nobody else is laughing because they might have heard these mm. comments earlier also. For, for me, mm. it was a very new thing. Mm. So I presented and uh, later on I found out, I was not sure whether he's going to give the, but I think he had already made up his mind. 
So we got about five crores and, that and at that time. Mm. And plus space in Mangolpuri. Okay. They had their vegetable sorting center there, mm. Safal. Achha. So in okay. their administrative building, mm. they gave us one floor. For this research. For the for research. Mm. I mean I it was like when I wanted to come back, there was Terry. Mm. When Terry got a little fed up, we I landed up here mm. and and uh, Dr. Kurian came to help. So then four or four or four or five of our colleagues who were working along with me mm. at Terry, they all resigned and joined in that project. Mm. So so if you want to do applied side and mm. basic work also, you need a bigger team. Yes. And that is not usually feasible mm. because you usually get work done through PhD students. Yes. But like Dr. Arundhati Mukhopa there with, with us, she made around 15,000 doubled haploid lines. 15,000? 15, 15,000. Now, we, although DH technology was, technique was developed in Professor Satish Meshri's lab, mm. but nobody had used it in such a big way mm. for breeding of any crop. Mm. So, so we had a full team then, mm. and the land we got was in village Jaunty, mm. uh, on the uh, Delhi Haryana border, uh, on most uh, in the on the western side. Mm. And Jaunty was a village where the Green Revolution beets okay. were grown, so it had a big history. But mm. nobody knew about that in the village, you know, mm. because the older generation might yes. have just passed, passed away. Mm. So. Mongolpuri group used to go to Jaunty to look at uh, the breeding side. Mm. Uh, but it was really a dream come true that you do some basic work and then convert it into, uh, to take it to the field house. So, sir, when this got uh, the approval, what is your level of happiness? You are satisfied? No, we were satisfied that we mm. can do some work. Uh, we got some piece of land in mm. South Campus also. Where we could put our mm. materials, transgenics in the mm. net house and so on. So things were okay, mm. even though at, at one time they looked so very bad that mm. at South Campus the faculty was struggling mm. very badly. Genetic. Only biochemistry had some, okay. and even plant molecular biology. Mm. I mean, the colleagues worked very hard yes. uh, to develop that department. The building was also lying unused. Hmm. unfinished so quite a bit of effort was made hmm. by colleagues at that time in getting things hmm. uh, and I must say that uh, both Professor Bakshi and, and Professor Mehta who became vice chancellor after that were very supportive hmm. uh, although they were not from the science background hmm. uh, but they were they were quite supportive so sir uh, where the field trials have uh, conducted in but as I told you, the IRI the, is also involved. No, IRI was involved because we wanted to. We go used to go to them to learn about what is happening in the country. Mm -hmm. And Varuna variety was actually the variety. Mm -hmm. uh, IRI has made some other varieties like Usa Bold, mm -hmm. little bit bigger seed, and so on. So we got all the alloplasmic lines. Mm. which were not working well from them only, from Dr. Shampatash mm -hmm. and some from Dr. Shivana. And as I told you, we were working to clean them up through somatic survivalization. Mm -hmm. But the first thing we did in in at uh, South Campus was to make the Barnes Bar Star lines. Mm -hmm. And we had to change a few things. We had to develop, make a codon modified Bar Star gene for higher expression because Barnes, let's say, comes for a little bit of time. Then Barnes must be more in quantity mm -hmm. so that no Barnes molecule is left mm -hmm. unbound. And also it should start sort of expressing a little bit earlier. Otherwise, the Barnes line will not get fully mm -hmm. restored if mm -hmm. the male sterility sets in. Mm -hmm. So we we filed some patents on the changes that we have made, mm -hmm. and we got both national and international patents. Mm -hmm. 
so that is a bit of recognition but as i mentioned to you it is a technology which was essentially developed by plant genetic systems mm. and the gent group mm. we just adapted it to dunsia and in the process we learned a lot in how to express a lethal gene in a plant mm. how to buffer it from the okay. position effects and that worked quite well mm. so the barnes barstar lines were available in 2002 So, so when uh, when did you uh, send these lines for the approval that well earlier rules were more flexible so because this these transgenics had been used earlier in rape seed in canada mm -hmm. so we felt that there will not be much of studies to do okay and uh, we grew some thing in open also of course with isolation mm -hmm. of about 70 80 meters mm -hmm. on all sides and got some seed now i must tell you this that we found a process between a line which was i told you was long day requirement mm -hmm. but nagpur group and did we had funded a project with nagpur also okay and is downy who was one of the leading plant breeders mm -hmm. in canada he was interested in breeding mustard for canada mm -hmm. because in the drier regions of canada they thought they could replace okay. uh, napus with the uh, with juncia so they had made a line called early hira mm. too which had the same uh, growth span flowering mm. time symptoms and symptomy mm. flowering uh, stages with with the indian line indian lines like maruno mm. and something so we used eh2 as a restorer line and varuna as a Main strain line with the Barnes gene, and we made quite a bit of seed. We che we checked that the lines were absolutely stable. Mm. We put it in a couple of other backgrounds, all in net net house mm. in, in confinement. But for seed production, we went out with the necessary mm. isolation. But then the rules changed, and okay. uh, sort of uh, people became more conscious of it. The mm. environmentalist also. Mm. came out in a big way inspired by what was happening in the western countries particularly in europe mm. so then uh, rcgm said that gac rcgm that we have to repeat all the toxicology tests mm. okay and we applied to birac then got about 10 crores mm. for biosafety tests and each and every biosafety test that had been already done repeated again we did it again in the best possible laboratories mm. available in india i accepted that without much of uh, protest because i felt that this is the way country is learning yes going through the bio mm. safety protocols although bt cotton had been released by that time mm. but uh, it was another experience in fact the ga gsc that's in the genetic engineering mm. appraisal committee was so cautious that they said you do protein assays to find out if there are post translational modifications mm. so that was also done okay eliza kit was made within india mm. so in fact at that time the whole set of institutions were ready to do the biosafety work on mm. gm crops mm. but then you know given the hostility towards it mm. uh, most of the people left it in the tubes only but we had a system which was working so beautifully well mm. and the country required yes uh, higher productivity in mm. mustard so we persisted with it mm. and i think in about uh, i have noted it down somewhere here in uh, 2010 we started with the uh, biosafety tests and uh, in 2000 2012 we started the biosafety test and in 2015 we gave a Okay. Uh, huge dossier mm. uh, with all the studies uh, mm. to GAC. GAC made a special committee. Okay. Professor Velu Thambi was the was the chairperson at that mm. time, and you know he has such a vast experience yes. with agrobacterium mediated okay. transformation. Uh, we had uh, other people who were uh, not working in the area, but were very cautious people. Mm. So so many more tests. Uh, dumped also on us mm. to do this and do that 
including monitoring the bee activity in the field. Mm. So all those tests were done and, and submitted in 2015. Uh, from 2015, mid-2015 to mid-2017, all these kind of, another set of experiments mm. and so on. And in 2017, middle of the year, the GAC recommended environmental release. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, then, you know, some of the activists met the then science and technology minister. And uh, he's, he probably he chose the more taking precautionary principle to its limits. Mm -hmm. uh, they said that we should do some more experiments with honeybee mm -hmm. and microbial flora. Mm -hmm. So we represented to GAC, but uh, it seemed that the government was reluctant, mm -hmm. at least the minister was reluctant to release it. So we came, we went back to the stage zero, <laughs> ground zero. Mm -hmm. uh, then in 2019, I again drew the attention of the government that, you know, your bills are escalating. Hmm. This system must be given a chance. Of course, all this time these activists were saying, heterosis is not sufficient, the seed size of the... So, but what is the basis of their points? Is it some strong basis that... Or they just uh, pointed out You see, out what things? happened was that some people objected because the technologies were heavily patented. Mm. So they said our farmers are not going to benefit. It will be too expensive. Mm. Uh, some people felt that these technologies will only come through multinationals mm. and we will lose our food autonomy. Mm. Some people, I mean, if you ask a common person on the, on the street, what does he or she know about genetic engineering? Mm. Do they know when the plants were domesticated? Mm. Only 10, 12,000. Our whole mm. development as a, as a society today was based on that step of sedentary mode of mm. life in uh, the Palestine, mm. uh, Jordan area. There on the Euphrates banks, people started mm. cultivation of crops in a substantial way. Mm. So the crops, the tomato parent from which the to modern tomato come, you won't believe it has mm. such small tomatoes. And mm. so, and then of course the breeding work, which we know the green revolution, mm. dwarfing genes in in uh, disease resistance, mm. it is difficult, but breeders did it. And that is how we were able to feed people mm. in the 1960s. Mm. Because 1900 onwards, there was big problem with food production. Mm because a lot of new land had been put in the, the, the agriculture production increased because the American continent was put under plow, mm. Latin America was put under plow, Australia was put under plow. Mm. So the land being used for agriculture had increased. And that's how the world was feeding itself in 1900. Mm. But you were staring down the barrel because for fertilizer, mm. the bird droppings from Chile mm. were being imported by uh, European countries uh, to fertilize the, mm. uh, their, their crops. So, uh, and then we all know that Haber-Bosch process came mm. out to fix the nitrogen in the air mm. into ammonia. Mm. And that the fertilizer saved the world. Very intensive breeding also because in 1900, mm. uh, 1900 when Mendelian laws mm. were rediscovered, so that gave the basis to mm. that in, there's inheritance of traits mm. and you can fix them by smart mm. field experimental design. Mm. So sir, how this last uh, battle? Um, when I wrote again, uh, I think they felt that the technology should be given a chance. Mm. It was in, only in October 2022. But 2002 to 2022, mm. 20 years, mm. uh, we were just sitting with the technology mm. and 
had it been released at that time, of course, it would have taken three, four years. Yes. So let's say by 2006, six, seven, I think we would have been in much better shape mm. uh, on mustard yields than we are, we are today. So now farmers are using that uh, hybrid? No, the case is still going on. There's a, okay. there's a public interest litigation mm -hmm. uh, taken out by uh, the very vocal, vocally against people. Of course, these are organic lobbies also. Mm. Uh, that everybody, everything should be organic. I mean, estimates have been already made in excellent papers published in journals like Nature, where meta-analysis has been done on organically mm. grown. In wheat, you would require 30 to 40 percent more land under wheat to mm. have the same amount of production as we are having today mm. by using artificial fertilizers. So that is another point, but. Somehow or the other, the government was convinced, and uh, but the, the, in the court, because as long as it is subjudice, uh, the point being made is that don't do anything more with it. Mm. But we could put up trials, we could put up seed multiplication experiments. Mm. So we have multiplied seed in 22, 23 season mm. of hybrid of. Uh, Minstery line of fertility restorer line, mm -hmm. and also did a uh, look at uh, growth and performance of the hybrid at our station trial. Mm -hmm. And ICR has been mandated mm -hmm. that they will do the All India all the trials. coordinated trials. Mm -hmm. This material is there in in their trials. Mm -hmm. uh, they could put it at four to five places only because it, by that time it was already November first week. Mm -hmm. Season. And delaying it, that would not have given mm. any good results. And also, the uh, the government gave a commitment to the court that we will wait mm. till you decide it. We will not plant any more. Mm. But sufficient material has been collected. collected yeah. And mm. so this year we will be giving this material to ICR, mm. and they will put maybe trials, active trials mm -hmm. at uh, certainly. More than five, maybe in all the locations to see mm -hmm. how the hybrid perform. Because we had tested it only in Delhi. Mm -hmm. And you need to go to all kinds of agroecology mm -hmm. to see what is its worth. So, sir, during all these years, what do you think? What, Where our system require improvement? So that we can somehow uh, narrow this gap of lab to field. What all improvements see, this do is, we need? This is, Sonia, this is always talked about in agriculture, even for conventional breeding. Mm -hmm. And uh, generation time, you can get only one crop in a year. Mm -hmm. Of course, now we, we used to go to lay to get the second crop. Mm -hmm. uh, now you have growth chambers, you can grow there, the plants and, and do some uh, another generation advance in the mm -hmm. summer period. But all in all, uh, it is, it, has, it, it was quite demoralizing in some ways, but we had another very big area that we were looking after, mostly under Dr. Padan and Dr. Viva Gupta was looking at that, to map traits mm -hmm. through DH map, mapping populations. Mm -hmm. So we have done extensive mapping of the traits, where is the flowering time major mm -hmm. locus, where is the oil quality, where is the okay. meal quality. All that has been mapped, mm. and now that our the young chap in our lab, uh, Paritosh, mm. he did on his own uh, enthusiasm. Mm. Uh, he took up the uh, genome sequencing of Varuna, which is the archetypical mm -hmm. variety of the Indian gene pool, and it was an ex it's an excellent uh, assembly, and a lot of things are coming out of mm. that. So all the Genetically mapped uh, quantitative loci mm -hmm. and qualitative uh, loci have been uh, converted into physical intervals now mm -hmm. on the on the genome sequence map. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have got now so much information mm -hmm. in how to improve the combiners. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Pradhan did a very large experiment on what loci are contributing to heterosis. Is it dominance, mm. over dominance, epistatic interactions, the mm. three rogues that are the three mm. sort of important 
people mm. phenomenon that due to which heterosis comes through mm. and it seems there's an over dominance also there's some mm. locus joint dominance and huge number of epistatic interactions mm. of very small small value mm. so we cannot have a heterotic uh, site and maybe transfer it to varuna mm. of course it will replace mm. so then you will not get heterosis mm. but main thing which has come out is to improve the lines mm. particularly east european line because they're small seeded many of them are mm. long duration so if you can either through using our qtl mm. uh, and transferring them into east european types mm. or uh, now genome editing also yes, as you were mm. you were discussing earlier uh, there is explosive explosion of knowledge mm. in the genome editing area i mean can you imagine couple of years back we didn't know what this the phenomenon was mm. yes sir and since that very uh, sort of it has revolved breakthrough paper yes, yes. by sharpenty and durnas mm. labs so gene gene of editing is a much simpler mm. and more straightforward uh, but anyway we got the permission you know we are going to follow up the case in the court mm. of course the attorney general of india ag is standing in for the government uh, but we have to give all the inputs mm. because in ministry of environment people keep on changing mm. today it is you were taking interest mm. in it but you are transferred to mm. even outside the chair persons of dsc are additional secretary or secretary but sir these all uh, issues like somebody is there and then next time he, he will not be there we should not delay these processes these are wasteful of time yes. i there agree with you there should be a uh, a fixed duration that within this Actually, duration actually there was going to be, be an authority hmm. by safety regulatory authority uh, like the election commission hmm. or which would recommend but it's a chicken and egg problem you have so few mm. uh, projects going through mm. so you create a whole infrastructure mm. and nothing is coming uh, and then of course you know you might have noticed that leaving aside the fears of you know, losing food autonomy leaving aside what will happen to the labor for example mm. Have we decided to decide because the labor will be mm. out of job, and some of the our right right of the political spectrum people who believe that everything good was only in the past and mm. what is there and what why worry about the future? We should go back mm. to the old ways. But before 1900, everything was organic, mm. and the humanity was facing. starvation uh, you might have seen the news on sri lanka which shifted to organic mm, in yes sir and they had a disaster at there because it is it doesn't give you that much productivity but by all means you should put organic manure mm. into your soil mm. and would you believe the european countries are putting much more because they have large dairies mm. they process the excreta there mm. properly and bring it to the field we have one farmer having one cow mm. other one having two goats mm. problem is how to collect it and then mm. convert it mm. and into good manure mm. so in any case now that the government has taken the brave step of releasing it mm. uh, there are still experiments to be done on the bee now sonia there is no uh, evidence at all mm. that this technology which has been in field in rape seed in mm. canada from 1996 us from 2001 and australia from 2002 mm. millions of hectares sown with that nothing has happened to their bee keeping in fact in australia uh, rape seed is used to expand the initial expansion before mm. they move to another crop but we accepted it because we will gain some knowledge mm-hmm. and when i went to literature i i find that honey bees are so susceptible to mites mm-hmm. they have some virus diseases so when we do the experiments with honey bees we'll mm-hmm. have to make sure that the colonies are clean mm-hmm. because they may be dying of the viral infection 
<laughs> they're dying of the because they foraged on the barnet barstow line. Now the protein is not present in the proteins are not present in the uh, in the uh, what is it called in the honey in the in the flower nectar nectar. So when it is not present in the nectar mm. in in pollen also the bees collect pollen also mm. as a feed. In pollen, some expression is there of the bar gene, which has been used as a marker gene, mm -hmm. because you would require herbicide to select between mm -hmm. male sterile and fertile plants mm -hmm. when you are multiplying the A line. Mm -hmm. And even in the A into R crosses, you will never have pure A line. Mm -hmm. A is male sterile. You always will have to put the progeny of A into B cross. Mm -hmm. B is fertile varna. A is Sterile one, and the progeny of this cross will segregate one is to one into A and B lines. The B line will not have herbicide. A line uh, has the both the barnes and the mm. uh, both have been put together. Yes. So that's a simple way, but it's so hard to explain it to mm. uh, the court and and more so to these activists, activists because they refuse to. So. Basically, what is happening is that people are wary of uh, eating anything that is even remotely hmm. uh, dangerous. Yes, and we uh, what all we export from other countries that can be transgenic and it is transgenic in some nature. So the canola oil, which yes. we are, which is yeah. more on the expensive side. We have no objection if the transgenic is coming from different countries, but <laughs> within our country. We will oh, that is the irony. Yes, we uh, will not allow. If you see all soybean hmm. uh, that we are importing is uh, transgenic because non-transgenic soybean mm. hardly exists only in China mm. and uh, cotton about one, and a mi one million tons of cotton oil is being put into all kind of oils mm. because you never see cotton oil being sold separately mm. that, that is you don't see even pomolene being sold as a mm. The separate oil and on, it the, is on the there shelves. In every product, it's, every edible food item. Absolutely, mm. and it's not a good oil. Of course, it's not transgenic. Mm. So let's not uh, be try to create any misleading things. But it's a high in saturated fatty acids, mm. and it's not very healthy oil. Mm. But we are dependent on it. In fact, we uh, to have sufficient edible oils in the country. We are planning to put quite a bit of area under. Oil palm, mm. uh, but oil palm requires it's more tropical. Mm. We do not have maybe in Andaman, Nicobar Island, but mm. you, you would destroy all the mm. vegetation there. I mean, something has been left as, uh, aside for mm. posterity. Yes. Uh, you will get into that also, mm. which doesn't sound good. So we need to increase the productivity of mustard, mm. groundnut, and soybean. The mm. three major oil seed crops of the country mm. and mustard is about 40 percent oil uh, groundnut also has quite a high percentage of oil but it's also you know people like it as a nut mm. and as a nut you get both the protein and the, mm. and the fatty acids which is good better than best way, sir. better than yes. extracting mm. uh, and soybean of course mostly is a feed crop but gives you about 20 to 22 percent oil mm. uh, because it's grown in 10 million hectares now look at the beauty of mustard. In mustard, because cross pollination occurs through bees, mm. you can make hybrid seed. In soybean and groundnut, you will not be able to make hybrids okay. because uh, the flower remains closed. Mm -hmm. Pollination, self pollination occurs only then it opens. Okay. So it's a strict sulfur, mm -hmm. like rice and and mm -hmm. wheat. So uh, right now we are at a situation where we hope that the court will not interfere will not listen to these uh, and you know some of the scientists also joined them oh. including a personality like Dr. M. S. Swaminathan mm -hmm. who uh, with case one has put together a couple of articles and they say radiation is better. Now if you compare radiation mm -hmm. mutagenesis with genome editing mutagenesis mm -hmm. There could be some off type mutations, it cannot be ruled out. Mm. But in plants, you give one or two back 
back process mm. and those mutations will be out. When you irradiate or EMS treat seed, mm. uh, you look at the mutation, and the frequency of 10 to the power yes. 3 to 4 for every gene. Mm. So you don't know how you have, how many genes you have blasted. Mm. With that, your, that is the disadvantage. That we were happy because we didn't know that. <laughs> now how to reach out to public, you know, mm. is also not so straightforward, mm. not so easy. So, sir, what exactly are the key traits of this hybrid that it will uh, increase the oil production? It will increase oil production because the seed yield is 20 to 30 percent more. Okay. And now we have new combinations. Hmm. You see, we had a CMS system which we developed. I did not mention that to keep the story a little simpler. That CMS system, everything is restorer, only one variety, Pusa Bold, it is sterile. Hmm. And if the if the temperatures go too low, that also develops some mm. fertility. Okay. So using that material, we put the hybrids in the field. Mm. Two, two, two companies took the material from us and and what we found was that uh, besides this uh, uh, breakdown of mm. sterility and things becoming partially fertile, a major problem is which we are told that seed should die. Now, in markets where you don't have the oil content measuring machines, size becomes very important. Mm. What is the sign of quality? Mm. But uh, bold seed is not related to oil content. Bold seed doesn't mean higher oil content. Okay. The small seeded hybrid is 42% oil, better mm. than Indian varieties, a little bit better. So, sir, in kitchen we use two types of mustard. One is in bigger uh, seed, and one is rye, which is very smaller, smaller. Oh, that may be Nigra. Okay. Oh, achar mein dalte Haan, achar. pickles. Yes, That's even more pungent. Mm. That's one of the the diploid is Brassica Nigra, mm. and uh, B genome with Rapa A genome constitute Brassica mm. genesia. Okay. And sir, one more that. Uh, yellow sarso oil. Uh, there are two types of oil. One yeah. is very pungent and one is little, very low in pungency and it is very light yellow in color. So what? That is not low in pungency. You have to remove the glucosinolates to get that. The yellow sarso okay. has glucosinolates but its color is very nice. Ah, very nice. So we, we have mapped the two genes hmm. in Junsia which uh, lead to uh, the brown color or which the, the other allele of it mm -hmm. encodes for the yellow seed coat color. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, you discover lots of things. Uh, this line with Varuna, for example, with, with the yellow seed coat color is susceptible mm -hmm. uh, to diseases. Okay. So, sir, which, which line is the best uh, uh, considering the uh, oil quality yield and the bee resistance to? No, so oil quality is all high rustic. Hmm. and high glucose in it, all Indian line. Okay. It's only now after 10-15 years work that we have converted Varuna hmm. and we had to, we mapped five different loci where then looked at the genes and hmm. because the genes were known in the Rabidopsis, so from there we concluded which genes would have been hmm. involved here and uh, that was a very, that's been a long-winded project hmm. because these genes are recessive, quality hmm. giving genes are recessive. So you have to, if you go by conventional breeding, you will have to make F1 and then F2, mm. then back cross it to get it into Varuna, mm. then F1, self it and then make F2. Mm. F2 you can select for the low glucosinolate mm. line. So uh, it, it has been a it, it has been back breaking work, but you know the good news is that you can keep the glucosinolates in the leaf and mm. uh, so uh, we would. People will laugh at us why we did that, mm. but we didn't know that gene editing would be able to do that. Mm. And we also knew only from Rabidopsis work that glucosinolates are synthesized in the seed, mm. in the leaf, okay. and in the pod balls, and translocated to seed. Seed doesn't mm. produce any glucosinolate. Mm. It only it's the sink. Sink. Mm. Yes. Exactly. Mm. So I have bigger hopes from that, although. Dr. Pradhan worked so hard with other mm -hmm. colleagues in mapping those. But uh, 
that's the way the new technology is helping hmm. you to and now we want to set set the 18 to 183 linoleic linoleic hmm. concentrations also at the optimal which hmm. uh, specialist in uh, cardiac nutrition cardiac hmm. interrelationships show that high oleic is about 15% of linoleic linoleic and linoleic 183 which is not available in any other hmm. oil that's a specialty of mustard so that should be kept at about 8 to 10 8 to 10 so uh, hopefully uh, double zero mustard will be also available uh, new combinations in mustard using mm-hmm. varnish basta will be available mm-hmm. and we have done some interesting work in disease resistance and particularly i like to mention our work on white rust resistance where priya punjabi who is now faculty in botany department mm-hmm. she mapped in the east european germ plasm mm-hmm. two different loci that confer resistance to uh, white rust and these were transferred to four different varieties varuna pusabor mm-hmm. the varieties which farmers grow mm-hmm. and uh, last year they have been released by the indian council of agriculture mm-hmm. research but an, an important point i would like to tell you is that simultaneously when we gave the seed to icar for mm-hmm. trials at the same time we gave the seed to all the seed companies who d- deal with mustard mm. varietal seed development and hybrid seed development mm. these lines mm. we gave them all the information on the, uh, the markers that they mm. need to use to do back cross breeding and they are also converting their lines mm. some of them are early maturing which is good for mm. uh, gujarat and southern parts of rajasthan so we did not want to go through icr and okay. then to the seed company mm. so then they would have taken another 3 years yes yes so you were asking about how to hasten it mm. uh, what we what we can do is the public funded materials we give to anyone who wants it mm. we empower them with the background information and we did not take any money for from any company for this we just gave them like that okay so but sir if they commercialize because now it has been given you see the patents and licensing fee makes sense if you give it to one mm. if you have given to six to six people mm. the idea is to keep the price of the hybrid seed low mm. because they'll compete with one another yes, yes, yes. i hope they will compete with mm. one another and that way it is available to and the that mm. the technology will reach the farmer mm. and disease resistance why a company should be given the benefit of the public system developed thing mm. the public system should have the feeling that it should go to all the varieties yes. so that mm. so that every material is white rust resistant so we we are hopeful that that will add at least 10 to 15% mm. increase in overall quantum when the genes get uh, diversified into different backgrounds and it again uh, i think it will impact the genetic engineering of other food crops also in a positive way over oh, release yes. uh, yeah i agree with you so you completely because if you are not going to allow a crop where we need to increase the yield the farmers farmers will take it up in no time hmm. because the population is increasing with a tremendous rate but our technologies are not uh, harnessing or translated into we have not used field. them uh, we have not used them except for bt cotton hmm. and uh, you, you are uh, you are working in plant breeding but considering the other molecular biology biologists most of them they find out the genes that this gene is responsible for such and such stress tolerance and all but but that knowledge remained in the lab or in the journal it never translated into a product See, or converting it hmm. into an application of variety takes time hmm. and we could do that because our group had some scientific staff hmm. you cannot give phd student hmm. that backcross it what what has he what about what has mm. he or she learned they must make a genetic map they must mm. do genome sequencing they must do some learn genetic gene editing mm. something new and you use different mm. techniques so that once you have phd you are capable of mm. tackling all these all these uh, you know te- technologies mm. which, uh, instrumentation if i say only back cross it somebody has to do it mm. and that is why 
our model is not good mm. when we want to do applied work mm. like pmb i know that there's been always some pressure yeah. why don't you do this applied why don't you do mm. so you have found a new gene your phd student worked on that got a phd with mm. some knowledge of what genes mm. how to fish out a gene some hypothesis driven work mm. and now you want to convert that into technology you will have to make 100 200 transgenics mm. so that part should be done by scientists mm. not even post doc scientists mm. who, are, who are willing to do or happy in taking up one part of the work uh, and uh, somebody wants to be in delhi only mm. why waste their learning why waste their, they can be solidly contributing to okay. the overall program so sir we, we require collaborations of different expertise one is if if somebody is in molecular biology and he generated some beat so then we require now the plant breeders and all these uh, people to uh, contribute there and to uh, then uh, come up with a solution in our group we had that facility that those who were there to convert it were mm. also there on the uh, site but at the end of the day we have put our material in eclip mm. trials we if we want isolates of different mm. pathogens they are going to come from icr mm. we should deposit everything in the germplasm bank so all our mapping populations mm. we are committed to deposit them in the national bureau of plant genetic resources mm. the disease resistance work has been given to everybody mm. uh, icr system breeders can don't have to ask us now mm. the parental lines are with them any new variety they develop they can release it after making it quite mm. resistant mm. so hopefully we will uh, get more leads like this and we will solve little problem of our farmers in a technological way but uh, they, they, but it require again this is there, there are two more three major other problems with mustard mm. stem rot alternaria blight mm. uh, which comes in the cooler regions mm. stem rot comes in the drier regions in the rain fed mm. area mostly in rajasthan mm. uh, bundelkhand area uh, madhya pradesh mm. and if we don't and there's a root parasite on mustard orobenke mm. so orobenke can be only dealt with glyphosate mm. sclerotinia and alternaria we have found already that although the resistance sources are available for stem rot in east european line donskaya for example mm. there are multiple qtl which confer that resistance mm. so it's it's going to take lot of basic work mm. to find out what genes are there in alternaria we have picked a model system uh, rabidopsis where highly sensitive and resistant lines mm. are available this has been published already mm. and what was the mechanism is the same mechanism in two different lines resistant mm. lines mm. it turns out some are common some are different mm. and can we transport that knowledge to brasic agencia for that we would require genetic engineering mm. so we desperately require the use of all the technologies that have been developed mm. if we want to give uh, enhance the yield because mm. maybe low hanging fruit have been already harvested and now we have to go to these technologies in what one article you said that uh, we have to achieve low input and high output uh, for the farmers but that that's mm. that's very clear for example we need low input both in natural resources mm. i mean you know that the farmers agitation mm. uh, if you ask the farmer in punjab and haryana uh, not in the dry land part of haryana but in the kanal district of mm. haryana don't grow rice mm. rice gives them 6 tons 6 mm. and a half ton mustard gives them only 1 and a half ton okay same land same land mm. or maybe 2 tons at the most mm. because of diseases mm. rice that's that's what i moved out of rice mm. because there are a lot of people working on it mm. so the intensity is very high something like subbundus tolerance comes mm. from iri phosphorus better utilized mm. phosphorus comes from some other place that has to be pulled then mm. into the that's a, that's also a lot of work mm. but rice cannot be the only crop yes. in these regions because they are exhausting our mm. aquifers which posterity will mm. say that we desertified these areas mm. so natural resources fertilizer as much we can replace with organic mm. 
and in oil seed crops, groundnut and soybean are legume crops. Mm. They will restore the soil. So that mm. will contribute to soil. Then if we have glyphosate resistant mustard, it can be sown directly after paddy has been harvested in mm. that field mm. under what is called conservation mm. crop rotation. Conservation tillage. Mm. So there are lots of things which can be done, but you do need technology. Mm. And when we say white rust resistant material, uh, stem rot, stem rot you will either spray fungicide mm. or you will have the genetic resistance. Now you can make a choice. You don't like genetically engineered mm. base, but then we are saying that there is no way you will be able to breed it mm. until and unless you allow us to use all the technologies. And the use of pesticides is, is very harmful to us. Today we are eating so much of pesticides through food only. But Sonia, one type of pesticide we will not be able to get away from and those are the herbicides. Mm. Because manual labor is not going to be available. Mm. The already caught cotton farmers, why are they growing glyphosate resistant cotton in, mm. in the gray, buying it in the grey market and mm. the seed may not be even good enough. God knows who is multiplying those seeds and selling them. Because there is so much pressure of weeds mm. and the labor is not available. And it's very hard work to sit down on the ground and remove the, mm. the weeds. It's like mm. earlier everybody used to use cow dung for cooking. Mm. But now you ask somebody to use cow dung. I mean, an educated lady mm. in the house will say, you know, when there is cylinder available, mm. why are you putting me through this hell? Mm. So you have to see the people's convenience also. Mm. But I was a little encouraged that the drones are coming in a big way. Mm. So you can spray these pesticides mm. by not exposing people remotely. Now AI driven solutions are also coming here. Who through machines, uh, through laser, they will kill the, uh, these herbi herbicides. Yeah, but that, that. that's going to be a pretty expensive <laughs> affair. Expensive. It is there in the western countries. But Experimental. I also read that. <laughs> That the machine will go over the plants. It, if it, it recognizes a rogue plant, which leaf is not like that, blast it. Yes, yes. But you know. <laughs> that technology again requires so many years to come in India. So, sir, except uh, brassica, what all uh, crops you are uh, pursuing? Uh, well, we did some work on cotton hmm. and we developed some Thai Banese transgenics. But cotton is a very difficult plant to transform. So we don't have the transformation difficult for cotton till now? No, the, it, it's, it's varietal specific. Mm. Only a couple of genotypes can be right. transformed. Mm. And in, in mustard you get one in uh, around six, five to six transgenics out of ten would be single copy. Mm -hmm. In cotton, maybe even not one. Okay. So there are multiple integrations. Uh, there's, there's gene perturbation also. Mm. Majid in our lab did a lot of work on developing cotton transgenics, but it's a difficult area. Mm. And that's why I'm saying, you know, the companies, once they have set up their transformation protocol, mm. it will continue mm. because there is a dedicated staff. Yes. This cannot be done with PhD students. Mm. Because the, the, by the time PhD student sets his or her hand on mm. how to do transformation, he will go. <laughs> they, they, and they will have no other data. Mm. And people will say, this is already known, published. Mm -hmm. So if we want to do applied work in universities, some permanent, not permanent, some contractual staff, mm -hmm. which is happy doing that part, in industry it is very easy. They will give a good salary and mm -hmm. get anybody on any. Yes. Is there any other future project uh, that you are working on or excited about? No, no. I. This is time for me to pass on the work to younger colleagues mm. and in fact we have given a new project in which Dr. Degreet Kaur who is whose basic training and field is plant pathogen interaction mm -hmm. so she is going to look at sclerotinia and mm. alternaria is going to be looked at Nabi by okay. uh, Shiva who is a very bright student he got mm. uh, this uh, young scientist Inspire Fellowship mm. and he has got a permanent position at Nabi now and Naveen Bisht is doing wonderful work with the genome ed gene editing. So we would 
we have only requested them that we would need the support of Dr. Pradhan because only he knows <laughs> field work. Okay. Rest is field work. Field scientists are mostly in the clear agriculture research services exams and join mm. the ICR system. So, sir, you have the uh, exposure or experience in uh, during your PhD and postdoc outside India, and you have now from these many years you are working here. So, what in Indian system is lacking to make a uh, world-class research facility so that the international student come here for the <laughs> You want to get them here. <laughs> when our system get so much uh, prof, uh, what, what can say expertise and uh, yeah. in a way, how can we make... See, I, 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 I wrote at least in Indian Express a couple of months back or maybe more than a year back now. Where I try to point out, and I think a lot of people are now aware of this problem. We are spending too little on R and D. Mm. Only 0.65 percent of 0.65 percent of mm. our GDP, and that also quite a bit of it is from the private sector. Government funding is 0.41 percent of the GDP, mm -hmm. and bulk of it goes to very important areas: DRDO, mm. uh, Department of Space. Mm. Department of Atomic Energy, although those are strategically very important departments for R&D, and but what goes to the universities and IITs and mm -hmm. ICES is only five percent of the grants that central government releases mm -hmm. for R&D to different institutions. So most of the money goes as core grants, mm -hmm. that, like National Institute of Plant Genomic Research. Mm -hmm. You every scientist gets a set amount of money. Then they can apply for extramural grants also. Mm. But the competitive grant system, the kitty is very small. Mm. And that is not good for the country because a lot of people are doing PhDs in the universities. There are more PhD students in the universities and, and, and IITs and ISIS than in the institute. Mm. So that means their training is below mm. standard. It's not so good most to, of them prefer to go abroad for their postdoc. No, that we should not resent. We should mm. be able to get them back. Yes. And in fact, I have made suggestions to the government that we should send people abroad on our own money. Mm. Because some of the areas we are very weak. Mm. Like genome editing. What have we done so far? Mm. Genome editing. Yes, for learning and gaining experience. Yes. But yes, uh, this we have to ensure that they come back. And uh, Look, you have to put value on people. Yes. If I say to you, Sonia, you are our good student, we want you to go abroad for two, three years, and when you come back, you will have a job. Mm. I, I was trying to come back without anybody mm. very excited about giving me a job. Mm. Because if you want to work on agriculture, which country is you can do work which will be of value? Mm. I think India. Mm. If you do some work abroad, you can still, like the brilliant work Charpentier and Doudna have, Doudna have done on genome editing. These are breakthroughs. They come not because on purpose you are working for mm. application. People were curious about mm. what these repeats are. Mm. So some basic work has to be funded. If you ask a good question, there should be money available. All in all, we are putting very little money into R&D. Mm. In fact, the general public in India feels it's only now you hear about that we have to do better in technology. It's only mm. now we have to, we are realizing, the world is realizing, those who were sleeping earlier, mm. that if you are not strong in science and technology, what do you have? Mm. Today we buy so many Boeing this, and mm. Airbuses, Airbus mm. planes, how much money is going? And look at the edible oils. So many farmers toiling on the land, mm. and their productivity is really? one, 1.2 tons per hectare. Mm. I mean, first of all, it will bring a lot of joy to their lives if they could get two tons per hectare. Mm. For them, it is an increment. And farming also, sir, many of them are quitting. Most of the young generation, they don't like 
to continue with farming. Because it's, it's, mm. it's, a, it's a tough area and if you have only 2-3 acres, mm. what are you going to make out of it? Mm. So the land will have to be consolidated. People can have some percentage of that income going to them. Mm. That's another big issue. Somehow, uh, because you are also involved in uh, editorial articles in newspaper and time to time you are uh, writing uh, uh, on some issues uh, in newspaper. What exactly uh, you feel that the science communication and outreach needs to be improved to reach out to journal public and to inspire the young mind? How can we, in a simple language, make people understand uh, these technologies and inspire the young generation to take up uh, science? Well, I mean, science is such an exciting area. Finding something new and then applying it. So, I mean, how do we impress upon the... We, we need a situation where more, more good science is done mm -hmm. and uh, young people get excited about it only by seeing what is happening in the lab. Mm -hmm. How do you excite people? Uh, my saying to you, you must go in science. Mm. We must show that careers in science bring money, mm. reasonable money for good living. Mm. We must show that working on science, uh, you will be recognized. Mm. People search for these kind of things. Mm. Uh, but right now, this is a bit of an unfortunate part that we increased the number of PhDs in the country. We almost mm. doubled it in the past 10, 10, 10 12 years. We have not backed it up with enough money so mm. that their training is good. I am mm. most worried about that. Mm. Uh, leave other things aside. Enthusiasm. Some people are enthusiastic. Some people realize that they have picked science for, like a couple of my students, mm. they, are, they are not going to pursue science. I feel bad. Mm. Uh, they don't see an opportunity to get a faculty position. Women students are not in a, after they get married, they are not in a situation to go abroad. Mm. Where will they leave if they have a child? So. That is another issue. <laughs> that women's yeah. education is a different one. No, but <laughs> because why are we training so many people? Because sir, uh, during PhD in our department, most of the students are women. But when we look at the faculty level or on the higher uh, hierarchy wise, when we say the leaders are mostly the men, then there is a sharp decrease. And this whole scenario is something which... Because, you know, Sonia, the thing is, if you don't do some work for three to four years, mm. you lose out. Mm. And a lot of women who have done very well in Western countries, you mm. see that some of them don't have any, don't have children. Mm. Some of them, Charpentier is a single woman. Mm. And can you see that she did not get a faculty position in any American university? Mm. She was a postdoc. She moved back to Europe, mm. got a faculty position there. Mm. And because she is such an enthusiastic person for what she was looking at, mm. it's only the passion of finding out what was what were these bits doing mm. that she had to set up a collaboration with Doudna, mm. who had a much better lab and mm. more secure uh, position. Mm. So that kind of passion where from in, mm. in European cultures, even we had that kind of passion more during the British Raj days when mm. J.C. Bose and C.V. Raman and others, they must have been very passionate people for what mm. they were searching for. Mm. So science, you things, you have to be, you have to have an open mind. You have to believe that there is more to, to discover. And mm. since you simply cannot see it as a profession, mm. then you go into medicine, you go into engineering, you go into making, becoming a computer, somebody who can run different programs and help the mm. uh, masters to do this, write a software for mm. them. I think that's also very creative. Mm. Any new value you create, whether in knowledge or mm. in money, needs to be appreciated. Mm. But I, 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 I wonder, I mean, I, two or three of our women scholars who were good, good students and could have done mm. well, uh, have left more or less uh, science. Mm. So that part also, but supposing, as I'm saying, that we have larger projects, mm. supposing I had in my project uh, need a position of two, three scientist level positions mm. to do applied work, some of them may come back. Yes, they may be playing a secondary role mm. 
बट दे वुड नो वट दे आर डूइंग एंड दे आर गोइंग टू गेट रेकोगनाइज फॉर दैट कि भाई इसने किया राइट और बॉस कैन नॉट बी सेइंग दैट आई एम डूइंग एवरीबडी नोज दैट दैट प्रोफेसर हार्डली टिक्स एनी टेस्ट ट्यू बिकॉज दे आर इन्वॉल्व इन सो मेनी अदर थिंग्स So, sir, what is your advice to all the aspiring researchers who are listening to you? I can only <laughs> say that research is very important. No country. I would rather give more, ma- bigger message to the young people. I would like to enthuse by doing. Mm. You know, if if your coach is has been a great player, mm. you will also learn to be. And if things are happening, you mm. will try your best to become better and better. but i am more worried about creating the conditions in which india can be a mm. big country in the area of science and technology mm. because that is absolutely vital if we want to defeat poverty we want to become prosperous so everybody agrees that mm. uh, now everybody is becoming aware of that of course there are huge number of ideologues at the same time who are saying mm. uh, what was before 1900 or uh, 1500 mm. was better what better <laughs> life expectancy was so mm-hmm. low and you know so we need to increase our investments into smp mm-hmm. we need to send people abroad we need to raise the standard of our scientific work mm-hmm. that we do uh, you know so that you get into better journals mm-hmm. and then you will, as you attract more people with enthusiasm mm-hmm. then you may find some people who are you know more passionate than mm-hmm. the current lot the current lot's passion needs to be increased yes. and people like the top iitians they never mm-hmm. go into research they go to management mm-hmm. so that means they are not throwing good enough challenges in front of them mm-hmm. so uh, my point is if they are interested in research send them on india's money mm-hmm. to mits and harvards mm-hmm. of this world let them do the cutting edge research mm-hmm. and come back and what do you are all you have to offer them is a job in mm. one of the new iits mm. the country will be much richer with mm. people we could not have done any somatic cell genetics work if i had not been to ted talkings lab mm. yes sir and i would not have been able to make any vectors if i had not uh, had an exposure in mm. at max planck in, in where there were all the bits and pieces were there and i could start with mm. uh, making some agrobacterium based vectors mm. and the first lot of students i got was the best lot they were all trained in uh, they did their msc some of them did their msc from uh, this uh, madurai kamraj university which was the best mm-hmm. biotechnology yes. program mm-hmm. so the government put money started a biotechnology program the university had the good sense of hiring good faculty mm-hmm. and they created a bunch of students who were who were enthusiastic mm-hmm. so there are 100 ways of killing enthusiasm <laughs> there is one way of doing increasing enthusiasm is by doing better and better so we have little uh, small message for you whose message that's our team member mm-hmm. dr sodi vibha gupta and so on where did you pick these from different source oh my god <laughs> Professor of Genetics. I cannot forget the day when I first met Sir after my masters in September 1999. I was so deeply impressed with his dynamic yet simple personality that it became my aspiration to work with him for my PhD program. I am deeply indebted to him for molding me into what I am today. I am falling short of words in expressing my feelings towards him for guiding me throughout my research career with his concrete suggestion, constructive criticism, and valuable advice. His friendly nature allowed me. to reach him freely and getting his support in a genuine way i highly appreciate how he listened patiently and advised us in all those long discussions especially during saturday's lab meeting he still has the same enthusiasm when it comes to science a few days ago we were working on a manuscript till 4:30 am in the morning at his home he has always been a source of positive energy and inspiration for me i am thankful to him for encourage for encouraging me and boosting my confidence i am deeply moved by his perseverance dedication and outlook to our research problems which i always try to imprint in myself and i hope i can in turn pass on the research values and the dreams that he gave to me i am cherished being called a student throughout my life i am thankful to the almighty for having sir as my mentor thank you very much 
Hi, it has been a great pleasure to work under the guidance of Professor Deepak Painter. To me, he was not only a guide or guru, he was more than that and uh, I remember I approached him around 1993-94 to express my interest doing a um, uh, PhD in cotton. He agreed and at that time he was newly appointed as a professor and head of the genetics at University of Delhi South Campus. But he had no, uh, he had no lab facility at that time. But he was such a dedicated and instrumental person that within six months from scratch in a new building he has built such a, um, a best lab of the world not only for himself but for and help other faculties and when we were doing research there um, during my phd time i never uh, noticed that he ever went to any foreign country because he was uh, so deeply absorbed in the research grooming the budding scientists for the futures he had no time for all these activities he even uh, such a uh, caring person that uh, when I used to away uh, to my village for Diwali celebration, he used to take care of myself, culture design, the achievements. Uh, he was uh, uh, such a uh, caring person that uh, we always uh, feel lab like a home. Rather sitting at weekend and home, we used to come just in the lab. He always uh, uh, give full freedom to student to uh, carry their experiment at will and kept his office door always open. We used to bump any time in his office, either it's a, it's a research or gossip or it's a, or um, uh, telling uh, um, our problems that what we're facing. He used to uh, uh, listen and help us all the time. And one thing I will say, he knows how to train and polish um, a wild person like me, uh, who has a village background into a mature scientist who can think out of the box and able to provide easy solution to the existing previous scientific problem. I wish him all the best for his good health. Hello sir, I, uh, I spent the more than 19 years with you and uh, learned a lot of good work, good thoughts and good skill sets with you, even personal and professional skill sets. And those are helping me still in my work and uh, in IT. Uh, Though I miss the work which I um, do in the lab and having good discussions with you, but still uh, sometimes you call and I like having discussions in uh, the Preska uh, work. So even in the cotton, we have done very good work. We have uh, we had good discussions. We had the BT cotton patent, and still uh, I want to pursue those. Sometime we'll do that. I just want to wish you very. Uh, a healthy life and very more success still to come. Thank you, sir.